Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Physical Chemistry 101. My name is Dr. Lau. Today it's about the question, how fast is mass transport without external flow? This we are going to talk about diffusion. There are basically two different types of transport. The transport by flow, this is called convection, and the transport without external flow, that is called conduction. Transfer without flow. How can that happen? This image is intended to explain the phenomenon. On the left hand side, there is a container with hydrogen in red. On the right hand side, there is a container with helium in blue. Two gas tanks. If we connect the two containers, then the gases will mix freely without any outer flow. Helium will spontaneously move to the left and hydrogen will spontaneously move to the right. Not because of an external flow, but just because of the concentration gradient. Another example of diffusion. Consider the preparation of tea. On the left hand side, initially pure water. On the right hand side, a just dipped tea bag. Now the concentration gradient of the tea ingredients. These ingredients will move spontaneously from right to left by diffusion. The concentration profile is as follows. On the left hand side in the water a low concentration. On the right hand side in the tea bags a high concentration. And a concentration gradient in between. This gradient is drawn here as linear but the profile may also be curved. As with heat conduction, the equation of conductive transport applies. Flux density is proportional to the gradient. The steeper the gradient, the faster the transport. The gradient is given by dc over dx for a one-dimensional process, change in concentration per distance. The rate of the transport is described by the flux density, in this case the molar flux density. The number of moles transported through an area A per unit time, dn over A dt. Flux density is proportional to the concentration gradient. The proportionality factor is d, the diffusion constant. Due to mathematical convention, a negative sign is needed. Transport proceeds towards the negative slope of the curve, and this is Fick's first law of diffusion. In words, the rate of diffusion is proportional to the slope of the concentration profile. In our example, we have outlined stationary diffusion. The slope, the gradient dc over dx, is the same everywhere. And that means that although the flux, the amount of substance flowing from left to right, proceeds everywhere at the same speed. This also means that the gradient does not change over time. Let's have a look at the diffusion coefficient d. d is a measure of how fast diffusion proceeds at a given gradient. D is dependent both on the species that diffuses and on the matrix in which it diffuses. In liquid phase and water, for example, diffusion is relatively slow. The order of magnitude of D is about 10 to the negative 9th meter squared per second. In gases, however, diffusion proceeds significantly faster. In quiescent gases, we are talking exclusively about transportation without flow, generally in non moving quiescent media. Hydrogen in methane diffuses about 10,000 times faster than ethanol in liquid water. Interestingly, we can calculate or estimate the diffusion coefficients of gases using the kinetic theory of gases, using the average velocity and the mean free path lambda. The faster the velocity of a gas particle and the fewer it collides with other gas particles, the faster the diffusion. 
Thus, we can estimate that carbon dioxide, being a slow and bulky particle, will diffuse slower than hydrogen. In fact, the coefficient of CO2 is about a factor of 5 smaller than that of hydrogen. The movement by diffusion, which is described by Fick's law, was explained by the model of random warp by Einstein and Smolochowski. They described the random motion of a particle in a matrix statistically and came to the equation named after them. The equation is quite simple. On the left hand side there is a mean displacement x squared, the distance a particle moves by diffusion on average. On the right hand side of the equation there is a time and the diffusion constant. The displacement term x has to be squared since the individual displacements x as vector quantities would average out to zero in an isotropic matrix. Let's calculate the displacement of sugar molecules in water. Calculation shows that after one second the molecules have only moved about 100 microns from the starting point by diffusion. And we have to wait a long time until the particles are evenly spread in the teacup, about 10,000 seconds, several hours. So for macroscopic systems, diffusion is a very slow process and generally too slow for efficient mixing. The situation is different, however, for microscopic systems. In the biological cell, for example, mixture by diffusion will proceed within milliseconds. In a teacup, however, with the water completely at rest, mixing by diffusion would take hours. Efficient mixing in macroscopic systems requires convection, requires flow. Therefore, all macroscopic organisms will have a flow system to provide convective transport. For this concentration profile, we can use Fick's first law to calculate the rate of diffusion. On the right hand side, there's a high concentration. On the left hand side, there's a low concentration. In between, an almost linear increase in concentration. At the center, at about 6 cm, the diffusion is fastest as the slope is steepest. Remember, molar flux density is proportional to the negative of the slope. You could now read the slope of the profile and plug in D and thus calculate the flux density. Or conversely, if we know the molar flux, we may calculate the diffusion coefficient. By the way, this is an example of non-stationary diffusion. Whereas the slope is constant at the center, it flattens out to the outside. Thus, with time, the concentration profile will change. This change is quantitatively described by Fick's second law. The curvature of the concentration profile determines the increase or the decrease of the concentration with time. The change in concentration, dc over dt, is proportional to the second derivative, d squared c over dx squared, the curvature of the profile. At the points of maximum curvature, here and here, we accept the greatest changes in concentration. If curvature is positive, the curve is convexly shaped, the concentration will increase with time. If curvature is negative, concavely shaped, the concentration will decrease with time. With the curvature being zero at the center of this profile, concentration at this point will not change. In summary, a concentration gradient provokes diffusion. The rate of diffusion is proportional to the slope of the concentration profile. The concentration change of a non-stationary diffusion is proportional to the curvature of the profile. Fick's first law, 
fixed second law. With these equations, we may track concentration profiles over time. An initially steep concentration profile will flatten out more and more over time. Eventually, diffusion comes to a halt when the profile is completely horizontal. Let's summarize. Diffusion is mass transport without external flow. A concentration gradient is required. The rate of diffusion is proportional to the slope of the concentration profile. This is Fick's first law.